Hi there, Jason here for the Hagbayon channel and the Minas Bad Shop Talks. Join me again for another conversation on blade culture. Um, last time, we talked about the three main Bicol blade profiles. Uh, aside from the Sundang, Machete, the Bai, the Pantabang Tabang, or the so-called service blades. Uh, we said that the three main Bicol blade profiles include the Minasbad, the Ginunting, and the Sinampalo. Uh, to remind us again of uh, the previous discussion, uh, let us look at, look at some samples of the aforementioned blades once again. First, the Bicol, Sinagangan, Minasbad. So here's a Sinagangan, Minasbad. The Sinagangan, Minasbad is a what? Is a historical blade. Reputed to be the blade of choice of the Bicol Cimarrones. The Cimarrones were fierce dissenters of Spanish rule. Here's a what? Bicol, Sinagangan, Minasbad. Observable is the presence of the handguard and the presence of the Kinabayo hilt. The Kinabayo hilt. So this is the Sinagangan Minasbad. Next is the Bicol Ginunting. The Bicol Ginunting is different from the Visayan Ginunting. And the similarity in nomenclature only tells us of the what? The connection, relation between the Bicolanos and the Visayas. This is a Bicol Ginunting. Let us unsheet it. This has the Wastari profile. And this has the so called Bicol Tenegre Hill. Among the Visayans, uh, the Tenegre is a what? Is a blade. But here in Bicol, the Tenegre is actually just a hilt carving. Now the Bicol Tenegre, along with the Pinaniki, is usually found among the various what? Bicol blade Ginunting profiles. While the Kinabayo is usually found in the Minas Bad. So here's the next one, the Sinampalo. Let us look at a sample of a Sinampalo. Here's a Sinampalo. Let us unsheet it. This is a Sinampalo with straight blade profile. There are samples, however, of the Bicol Sinampalo with curvature. Now, for the Visayans, it's called a Ginunting, but for the Bicolanos, it's called a Sinampal. Next, uh, last time we also talked about um, the finding by William Henry Scott uh, that according to the Spaniards, when they arrived, they found the Bicols using the Chris and Baid as a fighting blade. The Chris and Baid as a fighting blade. Now that is a very curious item, a very curious uh, finding because the question now is, were the Bicols producing the Chris as well as early as, as early as then? We do know that the Bicols were experts in metal craft due to the abundance of gold in the Bicol Peninsula and the Bicol Islands, particularly Masbate, uh, Sotsogon, Camarines. We do know that uh, the Bicols were um, experts in weapons, in producing weapons. Um, but were they also building Chris as early as then? That is something we need to look into. Um, but the Bicols must have what? Must have acquired the crease by peaceful means. Who knows? Um, 
perhaps due to mercantile relations with with the people of Mindanao. At the time, the mercantile center was Cebu. And uh, the people of Mindanao were very much what? Involved in trading. Even as early as then. Even up to the uh, the empire of China. The people of Mindanao were already in trade relations with said country. Now, could it be also that the Bicols were able to acquire the Chris by a not so peaceful means? Uh, you see, uh, we, we know that the Moro raiders, even before the arrival of the Spaniards, were already what? Were already frequenting the various Visayan islands as well as the uh, Bicol Peninsula and the Bicol Islands as far as uh, Central Luzon even. So perhaps the Bicols were able to acquire the Chris after some skirmishes. Some skirmishes. Um, um, but we do know right now that there is a tradition of building a kind of a Bicol Chris. Uh, here in Bicol, right now, we also build the Chris, but Bicolized. Now let us look at a sample of a Bicol Chris. So here is a sample of a Bicol Chris. We will observe that the scabbard is made of synthetic leather. Let's unsheet it. So here is the Bicol made Chris. The hilt is made of water buffalo horn or carabao horn. The handle is not your typical Moro Chris handle. The bronze handguard likewise cannot be observed in the Moro Chris. For experts on the Moro Chris, kindly comment down below. How do we call the built-in serration on this part on the bolo or on the big on the Moro Chris that actually serves as handguard as well. There's even a loop here or a hook which prevents the Chris from flying off or further attaches it to the hilt. This particular blade appears to have been forged as a what? As a straight blade. But the blacksmith must have chiseled this part or must have used machinery to attain the wavy element. Now this blade is being produced in the Albay province, particularly in the city of Tobacco, in Barangay, Cobo, Tabaco. Now that is a sample of a Bicol Chris. A Bicol Chris. Earlier we mentioned that the uh, that according to the Spaniards, as found by uh, William Scott, that the Bicols were uh, using the Chris and the Baid for their fighting blades. Now the question now is. How does a Ba'id actually look like? How does a Ba'id actually look like? Now we'll, we will look at a sample of a Bicol Ba'id. A vintage one at that. You can see that the scabbard is simply a makeshift scabbard because this one is a restoration project. It is really rusty. First, The term ba'id is derived from a term pertaining to a fish, to a fish, a fish of the same what, of the same shape. 
even in this condition, we can observe that the hilt carving or the handle is that of the Bicol Tenegre. The Bicol Tenegre. Only that it has attained the look and quality of wood because it is already uh, vintage. We do know that Carabao horn attains such quality when it gets older. Typical of vintage Bicol blades, this one also has thick spine. This one also has thick spine. As we said earlier, apparently the Bicol Tenegre hilt is usually found among the various types of Ginunting and also the Baid, the Sundang or the Machete. The other terms for the bide is that of a sudang or a machete or pantabang-tabang or a helper blade. But as we said, apparently the Spaniards found this particular item being used for fighting. So that's a sample of a bicol bide. Apparently, uh, the word bide is still in the Bicol psyche. You can hear it in the phrase Baba Idun Taika. Baba Idun Taika. Or, or I will hit you with my baid. I will hit you with my baid. Uh, usually, you will hear said phrase from mothers uh, telling it to her erring child or children. The phrase Baba Irun Taika can usually be heard from a mother. Mothers would usually utter it to their erring children. It tells us then that uh, the Baid is still present in Bicol cultural psyche. In Bicol cultural psyche. Um, now the question now is, do we have a knife culture in Bicol? Do we have a knife culture in Bicol? Or as related to what we said earlier that the Bicol Tenegre is usually found among uh, samples of uh, the Bicol Ginunting while the Kinabayo hilt is usually found among samples of Minas Bad. Now the question now is, what are the various Bicol blade uh, hilt pa profiles or pamel profiles? How do they look like? How do they look like? How do they look like? The, the Pinaniki, Kinabalang, and other blade profiles, uh, other hilt profiles. We better talk about that next time in our uh, next episode um, thanks for joining joining me uh, please like comment subscribe or share and uh, remember the pen is mightier with a sword thank you be safe